What is up guys, Rada here and today I'm gonna teach you how to be a Hardcore Samurai Spirit. Step 1, Hardcore Samurai Sword. Now if you don't have a Samurai Sword, a Pirate Sword will do, or a replica, or a temporary substitute, or a kind of placeholder. Step 2, Human Sacrifice. In the minds of most Yu-Gi-Oh players with a decent amount of experience with the game over the years, the word Six Samurai most likely trigger a fight or flight response, as thoughts of neat aesthetics and fun gameplay styles become immediately interspersed with memories of obnoxious loops and ridiculous field presence conceived by some of the most oddly unbalanced cards in the game. Contrary to its name, the archetype consists of more than five dozen cards, representing quite a few different eras of the game they originate from, of which most are still generally present in modern Six Samurai decks. For the sake of not making this video twice as long as it needs to be, the format of this archive will be a bit different, as in while every card in the archetype will get a certain amount of attention, the ones of particularly SHAMEFUL DISPLAY will be skimmed over at most. So let us introduce the merry band of irrelevancy with the original Six Samurai team. The level 3 is Yavisa, Yaichi and Kamon, with 1000, 1300 and 1500 attack respectively, and the level 4 is Nisashi, Iro and Zanji, with 1400, 1700 and 1800 attack. They are warrior type monsters that cover the main 6 attributes of the game, and they all share the ability to destroy a different Six Samurai monster you control in place of themselves getting destroyed. They all gain an additional effect if you control another 6 samurai monster with a different name. Yariza becomes able to attack directly, Yaichi can destroy a face down spell or trap card once per turn while Kamon can destroy a face up one but neither of them can attack that turn, Nisashi can attack twice in the battle phase, Iro destroys any face down monster it attacks at the start of the damage step, and Zanji destroys any monster he attacked at the end of the damage step. I dig the idea of representing teamwork by a small bunch of monsters that help each other out with protection while gaining new abilities if their buddies are around, and who said friendship doesn't work out, this guy? The original 6 samurai were a bit lacking on the swarming side of things but made up for with a nifty lineup of abilities and pretty good protection for the time. Another good thing to keep in mind was that back then, the game mechanic known as Priority was still in full effect, which they could get a lot of advantage from, and if you don't know how Priority used to work, that's fine, nobody does. When it comes to their individual effects, each of the six samurai was useful in a certain scenario, although at the time, Hero was probably the most relevant one. However, all that aside, you most likely won't be seeing any of these represented in modern variants, mostly due to the lack of any inherent special summoning conditions. On the other hand, what you might be seeing is the resident weeaboo of the old folks home, Grandmaster of the 6 Samurai. He's a level 5 with 2100 attack and 800 defense, you can only control one, and you can special summon him from your hand if you control any 6 Samurai monster. If he is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can add a 6 Samurai from your graveyard to your hand. It's kind of surprising that a card of this caliber came with the first wave of 6 Samurai support, given that it's still actively ran in most builds. He's easy to summon, has a decent body, he's got that buff old man aesthetics going on, you know, and he provides a bit of decent recursion. The only downside is that you can only control one of them, which leads to some arguments about the ratios. It's usually fine at one, but people People put in more on occasion. The other grandpa in the original lineup was a far more threatening old man, that being Great Shogun Shien. He's got 2500 attack and 2400 defense, and if you control two or more face up 6 samurai monsters, you can special summon this card from your hand. Your opponent can only activate one spell or trap card each turn. If this card would be destroyed, you can destroy a face up 6 samurai monster you control instead. On all accounts, this used to be the main boss monster of the archetype, even far beyond the time of the first wave of support. With future additions to the swarming ability of the deck, Shien became a lot easier to summon and could significantly cripple pendulums without much effort. Even now, he's a genuine threat to a lot of decks that rely on heavy back row usage for their game plan and remains one of the best cards in the archetype. Next up we have Xian's foot sword. Well, what the fuck is that? Look at his face, it's like a sleep paralysis demon. Monkey! So this is Xian's foot soldier, whatever that means. I was under the impression he had a lot of those given that he's a shogun, but who knows, maybe he collects feet pictures for him. All he does is float into a level 3 or lower 6 samurai from the deck when destroyed by battle, which means this probably hasn't been played or looked at since 2008. Back to grumpy old guys, we have Anishi, Xian's chancellor, also known as the guy you might remember from the left side of Evenly Matched. He's got 2200 attack and 1200 defense, cannot be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned from your hand by banishing two six samurai monsters from your graveyard. Once per turn, you can target one face-up monster, destroy that target. This card cannot attack the turn this effect is activated. This actually used to be a pretty valid monster to run as a comeback option, not anymore though, you'd be spending too many resources on a mediocre body and a piece of removal easily accessible by other means. Let's just move on. Spirit of the Six Samurai is a level 3 union monster. Very few things have aged as badly as old union monsters, but at least this one isn't quite Keith Richards level. He's got 500 attack and defense, the standard union equip and protection effects, and any six samurai monster is equipped to gains 500 attack and defense, and whenever it destroys a monster by battle, you draw one card. It used to be a cool piece of equipment back during the early Six Samurai days, letting them beat over bigger targets and getting draw power from doing so, but I'm pretty sure I don't have to point out that's no longer the case. They've developed better armoring technology since. Chamberlain of the Six Samurai is... Well, he's just a guy with 2000 defense and 200 attack, cause come on, he ain't got no good hands. Where's my hands? 
That fat ass can probably be put to good use somewhere, but definitely nowhere near a Six Samurai deck. Bridging the gap between the original lineup and the Synchro era, we have Hand of the Six Samurai. My hand! It's a level 3 with 1600 attack and 1000 defense, and if you control another face up Six Samurai monster, you can tribute one Six Samurai monster to target one monster in the field and destroy that target. Well, that's one way of facilitating interaction, just chuck your teammates at the opposition. Much like the majority of the old lineup, this one is not worth discussing further. Okay, finally we can move on to the actually relevant section, the at least six more Samurai, namely the Legendary series, which made its debut in Storm of Ragnarok, taking the spotlight far and away from Nordics, who the set was themed after. Good. Since they have no shared effects, we gotta look over them one by one, but before that we have to sidetrack for a bit to show off their spell cards, simply for the sake of putting the power of these monsters into to some context. Over the span of four years, starting with their first lineup, the Samurai were given three continuous spell cards, first of which is Six Samurai United. Each time a Six Samurai monster is normal or special summoned, place one Bushido counter on this card, max two. You can send this card to the graveyard, draw one card for each Bushido counter on this card. Sounds ridiculous? It absolutely is, but it came from a different time. Gateway of the Six is the next one, and it gains two Bushido counters each time a Six Samurai monster is normal or special summoned. You can remove a number of counters from anywhere on the field to activate one of these Effects. 2. Target a 6 Samurai or Shien monster and increase its attack by 500 until the end phase. 4. Add a 6 Samurai from your deck or graveyard to your hand. And 6. Target one Shien effect monster in your graveyard, special summon that target. This was a TCG exclusive from 2009, and being as obnoxiously packed as it is, it was mostly a sign of things to come. Terrifying things. Lastly, there is Shien's Dojo, which gains a counter whenever a 6 Samurai monster is normal or special summoned, and you can send this card to the graveyard to special summon one 6 Samurai or Shien effect monster from your main deck whose level is less than or equal to the number of Bushido counters on this card. Zooey mama, that's a lot of draw power, searching, and also spam ability, all for the low cost of simply summoning monsters. Thankfully, this archetype seems pretty lacking in the area of field presence generation so far, so I guess it's all balanced out nice and dandy. As if. Anyway, Legendary Six Samurai Kageki is a level 3 wind warrior with 200 attack and 2000 defense, indicating some spicy Chamberlain lore. I found my hand. And when he's normal summoned, you can special summon a level 4 or lower Six Samurai monster from your hand. Also, while you control a different Six Samurai, Kageki gains 1500 attack. This one's pretty self explanatory and easily leads into the swarming ability of Legendary Six Sams. You essentially kickstart your field building by normal summoning Kageki and moving on from there. His attack boosting is cute and has some synergy with our crappy XE's monster, so that's also a bonus. I mean, Come on, four swords, shank four dudes at once, shank one dude four times. Next up we have Mizuho and Shinai, because they're essentially designed to interact with each other. And then they kiss. They're both level 3, one's fire attribute and the other is water. Mizuho has 1600 attack and 1000 defense, while Shinai has 1500 attack and defense. You can special summon one from your hand if you control the other. Mizuho lets you tribute another 6 samurai monster to pop a card on the field, while Shinai lets you add a different 6 samurai monster from your graveyard to your hand when he's tributed. This is the unholy duo that, among with other legendary samurai, generated an insane amount of loops for the deck, resulting in terrifying field presence in combination with Bushido counter spells. I don't think I have to elaborate why Gateway spent as much time on the limited list as it did, given how easy the legendary Six Samurai made it to pack the field with counters. The Mizuho and Shinai combo wasn't necessarily the core of the Spamurai playstyle, but their interaction was definitely a cornerstone of many ridiculous plays. They used to not be particularly worth running between Gateway's hit and today, but right now you should run at least two of each. Legendary Six Samurai Anishi is a light level 4 with 1700 attack and 700 defense, and once per turn during either player's turn, you can banish two Six Samurai monsters from your graveyard to target one face-up monster on the field and return it to the hand, but only if you control a different Six Samurai monster. While you control two other Six Samurai, Hanishi gains 500 attack and defense. He used to be pretty damn solid removal during the Synchro era when bouncing was an immensely powerful method of removal, in addition to being a solid beat stick, but the lack of inherent special summoning condition makes him pretty archaic in comparison to the other legendary Samurai. That's just what happens when you escape the retirement home to play Samurai with your old pals. Legendary Six Samurai Kizan is a level 4 Earth with 1800 attack and 500 defense, which you can special summon from your hand if you control a Six Samurai with a different name. If you control two or more other Six Samurai monsters, this card gains 300 attack and defense. Much like Kageki, you can't afford not to run this one. It's the most spammable monster in the deck, letting you vomit onto boards harder than a surfer with motion sickness. There's literally no reason to run any less than 3, it's a non once per turn free monster because this archetype was made without a single solitary hint of future proofing. The final legendary 6 samurai is the level 5 dark synchro Shien. He's got 2500 attack and 1400 defense, requires 
requires one warrior tuner and one or more non-tuner six samurai monsters, and once per turn you can negate the activation of an opponent's spell or trap card and destroy it. If Shien would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you can blow up a different six samurai monster you control. This is one of, if not the most iconic archetypal synchro monster ever made, and for good reason. Being astoundingly easy to summon in multiples, offering simple play shutdown and generally being a solid beat stick made Shien an absolute monster back in the day, and he's still pretty formidable even now. An important distinction to make is that while you control the old Shien along with this one, it doesn't mean your opponent's back row is completely shut down, just that they get only one unnegated activation per turn, because rulings are silly. Another distinction vaguely worth pointing out is that according to Gateway of the Six and Shien's Dojo, Shien is an archetype of its own, involving cards like Shien's Chancellor, Tenkabito Shien, Monkey, and a normal monster from 1999 suffering from a mistranslation. The Synchro Shien, though, is not a member of this group as there's a space in his name. The lore reason for this is the sickest thing I've heard in my life, check this out. While Shien means blue flame, Shien means DEATH FLAME. Run this guy all the time, don't leave the house without him. Kugimusha of the 6 Samurai is a level 2 Earth Tuner with 400 attack and 1800 defense, and when a 6 Samurai monster is targeted by a card effect, you can transfer the target to this card instead. Kugimusha used to be the star tuner of the deck, not only due to easily enabling Shien, but also due to giving you access to Naturia Beast. The effect also came in handy on occasion, although it was hardly the card's primary purpose. It's no longer the star of the show due to better tuner options, but it's not the worst thing to run if you really want to get out Naturia Beast. Similar situation with Elder of the 6 Samurai, which is a level 3 with 400 attack and 0 defense, which you can special summon from your hand if the opponent controls a monster and you don't. It used to work pretty well in tandem with Kagimusha, and again, I guess there are worse things you could put in a 6 samurai deck if you really have a soft spot for this mobile crab home. Neither are particularly recommended though. Next up we have a couple more Shien related cards, the first being MONKEY Okay, were samurai warlords commonly associated with owning monkeys or something? What's going on here? Let me, let me look up some info. Shien's adopted child? Oh, now I understand. Even less than before. It's a level 1 tuner you can discard from your hand to protect a battling 6 samurai monster from being destroyed by battle that turn. This thing's redeeming quality is being a level 1 earth warrior tuner, which makes a madman splash it into a deck with the intention of making Naturia a beast once every 15 helio cycles. Personally though, I prefer not to look at it. The other two would be Shien's advisor and Shien's daredevil, one of which is arguably a decent lockdown card but requires a bit too much setup, and the other being a Bushido counter juggler the archetype never needed. The last monster the archetype would receive before a long hiatus, was the rank 4 Xyz, Shadow of the 6 Samurai Shien. He's got 2500 attack and 400 defense, requires 2 level 4 6 samurai monsters and once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach 1 material from this card, then target 1 6 samurai monster you control with less than 2000 attack, its original attack becomes 2000 until the end of this turn. If this seems bizarrely underwhelming, that would be because it is. The card effectively has two uses, one is to bump Kageki to 3500 attack, which I guess is cute, but most often not worth the resources, and the other is to turn 2 level 4 6 samurai monsters monsters into additional counters for the continuous spells, something that's been facilitated by the existence of links, rendering this card mostly obsolete. Don't know what else you would expect from the final evolution of a monster from OCG Volume 1. After the community got a well-deserved 5 year long break from new 6 Samurai support, we got a surprise return to the rice fields with a secret 6 Samurai lineup. They consist of the level 1 wind tuner Fuma with 200 attack and 1800 defense, level 2 fire Gemba with 500 attack and 2100 defense, level 3 water Hatsume with 1600 attack and 1500 defense, Level 4 Dark Doji with 1700 attack and 1200 defense, Level 4 Earth Kizaru with 1900 attack and 1000 defense, and the Level 5 Light Fusion Monster Rihan with 2400 attack and defense. They have the shared ability. If exactly one 6 Samurai monster you control and no other cards would be destroyed by a card effect, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. This is a mediocre but serviceable piece of protection, similar to Twilight Swords in the vein of adding a banish focus playstyle to an old archetype that was never really centered around it. As for their individual effects, we first have Fuma. If this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one 6 samurai monster from your deck, except Fuma. From the moment this guy was revealed, it was a rat race to find the most consistent way of blowing him up to make up for all the field presence the archetype lost over the years. Right now the most popular method in the TCG is giving him to the opponent with summon sorceress, and either popping or running over it, but it was also pretty popular in Draco variants. Keep in mind this is also the only tuner in most modern 6 samurai builds, which lets you synchro with level 4s into Shien, but prevents access to Naturia Bizu to his attribute. Run one or two of these. Gemba lets you add a banished 6 
stamina monster to your hand when he's normal summoned. To put it simply, this is the last thing you wanna waste a normal summon on. It's like they made the card under the impression the archetype has infinite ability for a banish and recover setup. The guy's decked out with grenades, how, how do they make him suck so bad? Hatsume lets you banish two 6 samurai monsters from your graveyard and or field to special summon a 6 samurai from the graveyard and you can only use this effect once per turn. It's a good effect with a bit of a heavy cost, making it a decent one-off as a late game card. You basically search her when you need to in order to set up the recovery for later. It's also fine if you wanna play 3 of them on the basis of her being a pink shinobi girl in spats, you are valid my friend. Doji lets you send a 6 samurai card from your deck to the graveyard when another 6 samurai monster is normal or special summoned to your field except during the damage step. I mean, it's nice that it's not once per turn and you could theoretically pack the graveyard with samurai if you wanted to, given this deck's spam ability, but there's not much reason to want this. It's not a graveyard heavy archetype, and even if it was, there are better ways of going about setting up the grave while still making plays than relying on this guy. There's Kizaru and his assistants, the apeshit gang, and when he's special summoned you can add a 6 samurai monster from your deck to your hand, whose attribute is different from all the monsters you control. He seems a bit restrictive at first, but really he's the backbone of the deck's swarming ability right now. Ideally you'd be summoning him off MX Saber Invoker, but Kageki and his old are perfectly fine options too now that it's banned. The attribute restriction isn't too nasty, as you'll be getting access to combo pieces regardless of them occasionally not being the most optimal ones. It also helps that the effect is not once per turn, so you can keep fetching more stuff as long as you have ways to special summon Kizaru. Maxing out on this one is highly recommended. Finally, there's the fusion, which was unexpected to say the least. Rihan requires a contact fusion of three six samurai monsters with different attributes to summon, cannot be used as fusion material, and once per turn you can banish a six samurai monster from your hand or field to target and banish one card on the field. There are there are so many ways they could have made this worth running, but it's like they didn't want to commit to any of them. If the card required two materials instead of three, or the removal was a quick effect, I could actually see this being played alongside Sheehan as a formidable extra deck monster, but as it stands, it's basically pack filler. They couldn't even be bothered to make the cost a discard, which would have at least played into the style of the new support by setting up the graveyard for protection. This card's existence baffles me. Nobody asked for a 6 Sam fusion, let alone one this underwhelming. I haven't been this disappointed by a Sam since Serious Sam 2. The final main deck monster is Legendary Secret of the Six Samurai. It's a level 4 with 500 attack and 2000 defense, and when you normal or special summon a Secret Six Samurai monster, except during the damage step, you can special summon this card from your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. Once per turn, you can banish one level 4 or lower Six Samurai monster from your graveyard. Until the end of this turn, this card's attribute, level, and attack and defense become the same as that banished monsters. It could be worse. The special summon condition is a bit wacky, given how it specifically requires a Secret Six Samurai monster, but you're throwing those around pretty often anyway, so it shouldn't be too much of a problem. The stat that copy effect can be used in some interesting ways, particularly with one of their spell cards we'll mention soon, and if anything it's decent link material. It's not a staple, but if you're gonna run it, I don't recommend more than one. And for their final monster, we have the Link 2 Great General of the Six Samurai. He's got 1000 attack, points bottom left and bottom right, requires two warrior monsters, of which at least one is a Six Samurai, and it has the following effect. If this card is Link summoned, you can discard one card, add one card from your deck to your hand that you can place a Bushido counter on. You can only use this effect once per turn. Each time a Six Samurai monster is normal or special summon to a zone discard points to, place one Bushido counter on this card. Gains 100 attack for each Bushido counter on your field. I'll go ahead and say, Six Samurai did not deserve a monster of this caliber in 2018, full fucking stop. Not only is this dude ridiculously easy to summon and has great arrows, but he searches all of the Bushido counter spells on summon, and if that wasn't enough, he shits out counters on his own as well. Is this an overcompensated apology for Rihan? Cause I could believe it. I don't have much else to add here other than telling you to run this dude and pray that he hits the TCG soon enough. Enough. Moving on to the spells, let's get the ones you'll never even want to consider running out of the way. Sheehan's Castle of Mist, a field spell that screams 2006. Legendary Ebon Steed, an equip that screams 2006 even louder. Six scrolls of the samurai, cause you're not tribute summoning the level 7 Sheehan and you're sure as hell not doing it with the spell card either. Temple of the Six, because it's a very subpar Bushido counter generator. And Six Strike Triple Impact, because despite the sick ass name, artwork and nuke effect, it is entirely unnecessary in the deck. Anyway, now we have Cunning of the Six Samurai. It's a quick play that lets you send the Six Samurai you control to the graveyard to special summon one six samurai from either player's graveyard. You can use this to swap through your combo pieces or dodge destruction, as well as resummon Kizaru for the effect, so it's not the worst thing, but it hasn't been ran competitively in a while. And these are the ancient Japanese eye beams with which they write the Yu-Gi-Oh rule books. Asceticism of the Six Samurai is another quick play spell which lets you target a six samurai monster you control and special summon another one from your deck with the same attack but with a different name and is destroyed during the end phase. This is a very interesting effect that allows for a little bit of additional field presence. Ideal target 
units include Kagimusha and Elder, Mizuho and Hatsume, Kageki and Fuma, Attack Boosted Kizan and Grandmaster, and it also works well with Legendary Secret. In a lot of scenarios, it's essentially a free monster, as if the Arctype isn't getting enough of those already, so while it's not really necessary, he doesn't hurt too much to run it either. Sheehan's Smoke Signal is a normal spell that lets you add a level 3 or lower 6 Samurai monster from your deck to your hand. Nah, don't run this one, it adds too much consistency to the deck. Everyone knows that a smart player can win without resorting to good cards such as this one. Instead, I recommend 3 copies of Single Purchase and at least 1 Dogu for maximum patrician deck building. Anyway, run 3 Smoke Signal. Finally, there's the last quick play, Secret Skills of the 6 Samurai. Send one monster you control to the graveyard, then target one of your banished 6 Samurai monsters, special summon it. You can only activate 1 Secret Skills of the 6 Samurai per turn. You could theoretically run this, but you know what other card essentially does the same thing for a lower cost? Ah, DDR! Exactly. DDR also helps out with running Isolde in the deck, so while Secret Skills is decent on the basis of synergizing with some of your monsters, it's not an ideal choice. As for the traps, let's line out the complete garbage before taking a look at a slightly more notable garbage. Return is a better slash worse Call of the Haunted, which the archetype kinda doesn't need. Breakthrough is that one card that would pop up whenever you looked up Breakthrough skill on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro, and that's the most relevance it ever had. Swift Samurai Storm is crappy and old. Shien's scheme misunderstands how this deck is supposed to work by implying you haven't shut out every single samurai from your hand by the end of the turn, Thunderblast misunderstands what Bushido counters are for, and Swift Strike Armor is about as swift as a dead horse. That leaves us with 5 more trap cards, first of which is Backs to the Wall. Not necessarily a good card, but an extremely interesting one. Pay life points so that you only have 100 left. Special summon as many 6 samurai monsters from your graveyard as possible. You cannot special summon more than one monster with the same name, or a monster that has the same name as a monster on your field. See, one thing is to have your back to a wall, but this is more along the lines of gliding your dick over an active chainsaw just to show off. This could be used as a last resort card, but I guarantee you that most often he was just used as a play extender when going in for an OTK or massive field setup. Still, due to the insane risk of the cost, it never saw competitive relevance. What people don't tend to realize, though, is that back to the wall enables the ever so elusive Sparks FTK when you exchange it to your opponent. Double edged sword technique lets you target two six samurai monsters in your graveyard and special summon those targets in face up attack position. During the end phase of this turn, destroy them, and if you do, take damage equal to those destroyed monsters attack. It's a double revival, therefore a strict upgrade over return. The end phase burn doesn't mean much, when the monsters will probably be used as extra deck materials by then, which is primarily why the card was ran as much as it was. People don't tend to run it nowadays, but it's a perfectly fine card if you have too much free space in your deck. Then we have the counter trap, Musakane Magadama. Nailed it. When your opponent activates a spell card, trap card or monster effect that destroys a card, while you control a face-up 6 samurai monster, negate the activation and if you do, destroy it. It used to be a staple in the deck back when destruction effects were still pretty rampant, and while its usage definitely depends on the format, you probably won't be seeing anyone dangle this thing around again for a long time, if ever. Back to the normal traps, we've got 6 style DUO WIELD! If the only monster you control is one 6 samurai monster in face-up attack position, target 2 cards your opponent controls, return those targets to the hand. It was on the verge of greatness. If the condition had been tributing a 6 samurai as opposed to controlling only one, acting as the archetypal Icarus attack, this might have seen a fair amount of usage back in the day. Sadly, that's not the case, so my man Nisashi just ends up looking kinda silly over here, flailing his swords around like an idiot. And for the final normal trap and the final 6 samurai card altogether, it's the 6 shinobi. If you control 6 6 samurai monsters with different attributes, skip your opponent's next turn. I feel like if you manage to get your board to this state, there won't be a next turn. Like, there's playing win more cards, and then there's leaving a smoking crater where your opponent's dignity used to be. This would be the latter. Anyway, the card is no time walk, I'll tell you that much. Now it's time to rate the 6 out of 5. In the consistency department, there are zero complaints. Even with limited gateway, 95% of the time, the deck opens with plays that are at the very least decent, and oftentimes it's able to establish a very formidable board on turn 1. Regardless of the combo pieces you open up with, you won't be breaking much with this one. Their power output is not amazing, but it's not too shabby either. The base attack values are solid at best, but the field can get packed with Samurai pretty quickly, and the attack boosting from gateway can easily get you into OTK range with some easy setup. Consider this a 3.5. Their recovery is at a decently competent level. It mostly comes down to their back row offering as much recursion as it does, but it can be pretty difficult for the samurai to come back from a field wipe. The protection is probably the lowest point among the stats, despite being one of the central teams of the archetype. Fact of the matter is, the only protection related cards you would actually want to run in the deck, that being Legendary Sheen and few of the Secret Six Samurai, don't quite offer too much safety from removal. Overall a 3, but if we're only considering the relevant cards, it's a 2. However, their versatility is pretty ridiculous. This deck jumped from a slow, beatdown focused playstyle into an unparalleled extra deck vomit machine, which still finds ways to function 
function in this day and age. With the link monster that facilitates their tendency to flood the board, they have tons upon tons of resources to dump out any obnoxious exo deck monster they need to shut down the opponent entirely. It used to be Rangominiad, now they're trying out Hope's Exile variants with number 71, they have varied levels and attributes for all kinds of synchro, exes and link plays, and there's a decent amount of engines they can work with. Not quite 5, but it's teetering on a 4.5. Here's a generic decklist, probably not the best, cause it's mine. I like my bamboo swords, what can I say? For an alternative, I highly recommend checking out Asian Persuasion's recently topping Hope's Exile build, because it's pretty disgusting in all the right ways. I hope that the 6 Samurai enthusiasts in the audience don't mind me saying that, for all intents and purposes, I think this archetype is done. I know it doesn't mean much in a game where Blackwings and Heroes exist, but the amount of relevance this deck had through the years, combined with the tons of support it received, and the staggering ability to easily adapt to new summoning mechanics, kinda makes it look like they overstayed their welcome just a little bit. They've got some interesting lore going on, loosely based around the life of Oda Nobunaga, their artwork is colorful and thematically varied design-wise, and there's a metric crap ton of ways to go about playing them without even resorting to hour-long lockdown loops, so overall I think this bunch of cards is wrapped up pretty nicely. Anyway, watch me swallow a soul trick, when in 3 weeks Konami announces the Super 6 Samurai lineup. God damn it. Konnichiwa, Mega Man, Tenai de Omen Shiagari, Omoshiroi Tenebi no Tomodachi. 私は製鉄所に住んでいます。お風呂はどこですか？What the fuck is this guy you even talking about? Hey, uh, could you speak Japanese? I I can't understand you. Hi, um, thanks for watching. Watch the other ones too. I think they're pretty okay at the very least. Anyway, sorry that this one took so long. I promise the next one will be way way sooner. Um, stay hydrated, and have fun, and good night, or day, I don't know.